What's good everybody? Hey, welcome to another video. In today's video, I wanna break down a few of the mechanics around the turnaround that I think will help a lot of people with making sure that their horses pivot on the right pivot foot, that their body is straight in the turn and that they're moving their feet freely and properly, okay? And so there's many ways to break down and there's many ways to teach a horse to turn around, but these basics I think are always gonna be fundamentally um, the go-to things that will pretty much instantly improve your turnaround. Now today for this, I'm gonna use Whiskey. So for some of you that have followed the channel, you are familiar with Whiskey. Whiskey is a horse that I first uh, was introduced to when I traveled to Dominican Republic. I selected a couple horses to bring back to the United States and uh, develop their career here in the US. Um, and so uh, Whiskey is a five-year-old stallion that has uh, he doesn't have the training a five-year-old would have that I've had that I would have had the whole time I think he's probably comparable to a three-year-old about mid time of year So maybe a year and a half of training and I've only had him a couple months So he's only starting to get the basics and we're always starting to find each other and he's really making uh, huge progress um, He has enough of my tools uh, and has done enough of my exercises I think to demonstrate this to where you can see what I'm talking about and get a good visual about it but at the same time you may not give it to me right away so I might have to dig for it a little bit and that may also uh, help you relate to where you're at with your horse and doing these exercises. The number one element that you want to have or be able to do in order to help your horse improve its turnaround is that when you pull its nose to the inside and control that inside shoulder that inside rein needs to be connected with that inside foot okay so what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to walk my small circle and then I want to be able to lift his inside shoulder get control of his, of his inside leg and I want this to be kind of uh, I want this I want this this inside front leg to be connected to my rein to my hand so if I have my hand here then I do not have an open my hand is not open so he and my leg is not open so he should be continuing to walk forward but if I open my inside leg and I pull him here then I should be able to control that inside leg and having it step to the inside. Now the first couple of steps he sort of sat back on his hind leg, stuck his rib cage out and that is a byproduct of working this and that's okay to tolerate that at the beginning. The next element we're going to look into is going to correct that problem uh, and, 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 and straighten up his body but the first two three steps he took there he sat back a little bit too much so I just kept the same contact and I used a little bit more outside leg until I felt him um, be a little bit more forward and make that step with with uh, impulsion with forward motion rather than just kind of sitting back and, and, and stepping that, that foot a little bit too far back. Okay, so my goal here is going to be to walk, take control of that shoulder, release it, just make it very clear in his mind that when I take it, I don't want any loss of forward motion and any brace at all. And then my goal here for me to be satisfied is going to be that I can go from this walk, open my leg and take him into that spin, control that inside leg with my inside hand, until he does it forward and I want to be able to do that without any brace or loss in forward motion okay so now I'm going to repeat that a few times in a row I'm only going to release whenever I feel he does that movement going forward following his nose into the turn see there a little bit of a brace in the neck sticking his head up sticking his ribcage out so I'm going to encourage him here a little bit there you go If you notice, I'm not opening my inside leg dramatically. I just apply a little bit of pressure uh, into my stirrup to cue him. There you go, very good. Okay, so a little bit of a loss in forward motion, but no brace, and so I'll consider that uh, progress. And, and so being able to do this means that later, if I'm asking him to spin, and I need to interfere to where I need to help him bring that inside leg further, I'm just gonna raise my outside hand like I did walking, pull his nose inside, clock. There, okay. The next thing that I want to work, and we're going to work that on the right side just to, to balance things out a little bit, okay. So what I want to be able to do here is instead of being able to pull his nose in and having him take that inside step or control his inside step, my inside hand, just like the other way, is going to be there for direction and for support. Okay, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to walk him and I'm going to pull on my outside rein towards my hip here. Okay, and I'm not trying to side pass him, but what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to walk a small circle. I'm trying to close this door and have this outside shoulder come in and that inside, st in outside leg 
step a little bit to the side there and in turn push the inside leg to the inside and if I can walk like this push this in like that and then back to the walk without brace or losing the forward motion then I know that in the spin if he's sticking that shoulder out I can just close that door and he will understand and, and know to, 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 to keep his forward motion and and get that uh, get those legs out of the way that way okay so here I'm I'm there you go see how he just sidestepped his front legs a little bit of loss in forward motions I'm gonna make sure I use both legs here there you go so once I have that I'm going to open my inside leg and keep that contact the same as if I was pulling his nose in until I feel that same there you go that same give there it is okay now I feel like I'm, I've closed this door here and that's pushing everything that way so there's nothing pulling him into that turn I'm actually he's preceding me he's ahead of me spinning because I've closed the doors and he knew where to go again I was able to obtain that effortlessly because of how well he was able to do it at the walk okay so that's gonna be the the key here so here I'm gonna do it again there you go very nice you gotta keep him going the outside leg is the gas pedal very pretty okay I like that okay so now that we can control both front feet with our outside and inside leg and our feet are connected to our hands we have good control over the shoulder and that is the number one priority in order to control your horse in the turnaround now you want to take that to the next level is teaching your horse to increase the drive into its diagonal um, you know going into the turnaround okay so you want to teach them to 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 really push themselves into that spin and not just uh, fling their feet into the turnaround okay you want more composure and the best way to get that and that's going to help uh, correct this outside pivot situation and all of that so what I'm going to do is going to be I'm going to do it on the right side here and it's going to be very similar to what I was doing when I was only trying to control the shoulder but this time I'm going to side pass him into that diagonal so I think that that it's important to mention that one of the things that I do different doing this versus the other thing just before is that I'm going to be pushing that hip under himself with my heel and with my spur okay and so I'm gonna do that in a similar fashion that I would do whenever I'm asking for speed in the turnaround okay so he's doing it pretty well so now if I want to know that he is actually doing it well is that I can go from him doing that right here Okay, I'm gonna get him a little more forward, a little more forward, right here. I can go into the turn without him changing his position. Ho. Oh. If you notice, once I started turning, he did want to sit back a little bit and naturally incurve his body. And again, this is, is this going to always be his uh, natural movement. So I'm not going to discourage that too much, but I'm going to make sure that too much, but I'm going to make sure that I don't lose any forward motion. So see how I was able to go from from driving him into his diagonal into the spin without any change in in pace. Okay, we we kept our forward motion and went from this to this without any shift okay if you're able to do that it's going to be a very useful tool in order to get them to you know to use their hind end to power their turnaround and increase their speed so the next element is going to be very similar to what we just talked about except that what we're going to be is be using this sort of restriction and allow type of philosophy in our training and I think this is one of the most effective ways to train a horse because a lot of the time you're trying to make them do something make them do something and and then it seems to be a sort of you against them type of game and and that makes it uh, and that makes it sometimes um, you know less a little harder to develop their willingness to do something what I like to do here though is I don't want to be doing this the same side all the time I like to alternate I think that this is the beauty of this exercise here and so here whenever I went from the right side into the left turn he moved pretty good but he did bend his body a little bit probably because we just worked on on pulling that inside foot in and and that that encourages him to bend a little bit and it's also something that I've done often to the left try to give him uh, more flexibility so what I do after is I go out at a spin and then I do the same side pass drive into his 
diagonal in that direction, which reminds him to bring that rib cage in, bring that outside, outside shoulder in. And now, once I feel that he is responding very well, that he is very forward into his diagonal, I could very well open my inside hand and inside leg and allow him into that left spin. Okay, and this is something that I would have done probably a few times before getting to this in the training session, but just for, uh, for, for the sake of saving time, um, I'll skip that and go right into this here. But now that he's doing perfect, see how perfectly he is ch channeling his energy through his diagonal here with no brace, perfect forward motion, great position. He could spin left very well this direction if I wanted to, but what I'm gonna do is stop and open the right doors and let him into that right turn. Oh, there for a second he was like, he went, he, he, he was a little bit overachiever there at the start, so I just spoke to him with my body saying, hey, you can slow that down just a notch, let's just get our, keep our composure and focus on form versus speed right now so that we can really have a perfect body position. And then he slowed down and he thought, hey, should we quit? Because I wasn't doing anything, I was just kind of letting him do it. And then I said, nope, keep going, just take it down a notch and eventually he just, oh, okay. And then he just did that and that's when I rewarded him. Very good. Oh. All right, so this was, uh, this was so subtle, I, there's no way that I think you could actually see that. I had a very minor, a very light contact in his mouth when I was turning, and there's a, there's at one point in time, I just kind of closed my fingers on the rein to tell him, hey, follow your nose a little bit, because I felt him want to drop that shoulder just a tad, and then after that, I felt he overbent himself a little bit, so I kind of closed my finger on the outside rein, which sort of brought that outside shoulder in a little bit. So, um, so I'm able to help him subtly like that in the spin because of the amount of time that I spent working it outside of the turn, okay? So doing this two or three times each way is gonna be, um, is gonna be the, I think the bare minimum here, but it's gonna be where I think you'll see exactly where you're at and you'll be able to determine better what it is that you can do more of in order to, um, you know, to get to where I am with this one. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. This was fun to make. Um, this was short and sweet, but I think that it can give you something to work on until I have more time to record more content. I've had a lot of ideas in the last weeks, uh, just no time to implement them, but I, um, I, you know, I, I reserved a lot of time slots in the coming weeks in order to get caught up on all of those videos and everything that I wanna show you guys. So uh, until then, don't hesitate though. If you have any questions or things you wonder or things you're uncertain, send me a video, reach out, uh, send me a text, an email, whatever and uh, I will be happy to help you and uh, I'm always here whenever you need me so if you did find value in this video please give it a like if you're not subscribed to the channel please do so and if you want more full-length explanations of all of the exercise and drills and tools and elements that we discussed today you can find so much more of that on the comfort zone horse training video series so I recommend that you go and take a look there's a seven day free trial if you you know if it's not something for you no hard feelings you can just unsubscribe and it won't cost you a dime but if it's something that you find valuable and you think can help you then come in with us on a journey and uh, a lot more to come so until the next one see ya